who are present. Um, looking at Transaction Desk Pro, uh, Pro view of your Transaction Desk account um, as opposed to the different views that you have. Uh, you have one account. I uh, just always like to emphasize that you have one Transaction Desk account, multiple views into that one account. The Pro view, which we're looking at now, the light view, if you're looking in the top right hand corner with me there, transaction desk light, uh, the less is more approach, uh, and if light is less is more, then pro is more is better, just more transaction management services. That's all the differences between the views is the number of transaction management features. Uh, the third view is the um, the mobile view, docbox to gocom uh, mobile access, uh, optimized for mobile browsing from those smartphones, netbooks, tablets, and so forth. Also uh, different views into your uh, one transaction desk account. Um, so what we want to focus on, time is of the essence here, moving forward to start a new transaction. Uh, top, shading to the left a little bit there, start a new transaction. I'm going to click on this button and we're going to go right to that start page. Um, to walk through, uh, to see the steps, to start this new file, to create the form packet, uh, to again deliver this packet out to a client uh, for signatures and initials. You know, to, depending on what type of client uh, you have, it's going to determine the type uh, of transaction that you start. Um, but a lot of these features are, are going to be very uh, routine and consistent. Uh, this may look a little bit different depending on uh, the association that you belong to. This is a nationally broadcast webinar. Uh, all of the steps are the same. Uh, you may not have every feature or um, form folder, things like that. Those, those little features may be different, but all the steps are the same to create the transaction um, and deliver a form packet. And that first step is giving your transaction uh, a name. Um, seeing a lot of listing uh, yard signs go up uh, this spring, so trying to summon buyers uh, into these uh, markets by doing buyer transaction types. Uh, but, they're, but they are, at their core, they're the same. You know, a listing file, a lease file, uh, a uh, purchase file. Um, they're all the same. It's just different forms that we're going to add to the file. So uh, maybe in that vein, maybe we'll do one we haven't done or don't do enough and enough is that lease file. Um, but what is the name? Um, we're going to go with Ben. We're going to go with Ben Benson and maybe as a lease uh, prospect. You name your files how you are going to best uh, benefit. You know how you're going to recognize that when you when you go back to search for these transactions to add documents and so forth to, to continue to work with these and revise these files. Um, give it the name that you're going to recognize. Choose the type so that you can easily filter through um, your transaction files to be able to find them. Um, in this situation right here, center of the screen, import from MLS um, is optional obviously if you don't have an MLS ID uh, or if you don't have access to the feature. My three out of four of the viewers here should have access to some type of MLS integration, uh, but some of you will not. If you have it, you can use it. Uh, in the pro view, I'm going to also show you where uh, you can import into your existing file. So this one's right here, right in front of your face, like, wow, I can import from the MLS. Uh, the other one I'm going to show you is not so, uh, not so obvious, so I'm going to show you that one. Uh, populate from a template. As we move down the screen, we just have these optional opportunities to add content to our new transaction file. Import from the MLS will add that property information and that MLS content to our new file. Uh, populate from a transaction template content that we generate within our own account, within our templates, our transaction templates, we can import that to start a new file. We do have additional webinars that show how to create the templates, how to build better transaction files using them. This session is just going to focus on your first time. You need to log in. You need to write up an offer, and that's what we're going to focus on now. I'm going to walk through the wizard. Uh, we are going to stay with the selling agent. This is changeable if you're neither the buying or selling agent, or if you're both the buying or listing and selling, uh, you can choose uh, to identify yourself on that side of the transaction. Ultimately here, I just want to click on Start Transaction. And I really would encourage you to start at that first substantive conversation when you have that first contact with that either, either a referral or you're working phone duty and you get a call or you get a response back from some uh, email or marketing campaign that, that you've been working on. You have 
a prospect. You want to start that new file. Today you might reach for a manila folder to start uh, plugging those pages in there. Maybe you're a step beyond that. Maybe you're going on to your computer and you're creating a folder for that new, uh, new client or prospect. So you're creating a digital file stored locally on your uh, desktop or laptop. Uh, the benefit of moving those files online to the cloud cloud computing, move your files from your storage to ours online uh, transaction desk. We have multiple server locations, Austin, Texas, London, Ontario, Canada, separated geographically, running redundantly to ensure access 24 hours a day, seven days a week to your transaction files and all of the data. A little pop-up message here, maybe you were reading that while I was uh, uh, chattering on there just talks about the transaction file and there are no required fields and we can save and exit from it at any time uh, and think of it as a paper, uh, a replacement of that paper file. Uh, if you never want to see it again, do not show this message again. I do these quite often so I have to leave it unchecked but uh, clicking on close will uh, close that pop-up. Do we have property information? If you follow me here to the left hand side of the screen, this dashboard if you will, bottom left hand side it says save and exit. We are using the transaction wizard to walk through the simple elements of our transaction file. The property information if we have it, any dates if we have it, contacts, forms, documents. Just giving an opportunity here to add content to our new transaction. Do we have it? We can add it. If we don't, we can skip it. If we don't want to really work in here at all, you can save and exit. If you'll just go to your transaction overview screen where you can then take the steps to add or update or uh, work with your transaction. So this is just that kind of pre-step uh, to it if we have this information. Do we have it proper information? Not right now. Just got a call. They're interested. We're going to start looking. Clicking on next. So would that be the same? We wouldn't really have any dates. Um, at this point, well, maybe they do. Maybe this is a lease and they have a move-in date, or they're a buyer and they're relocating and they have a, a required closing date. And also because I just want to show uh, the autofill features into our form, <laughs> we're going to get those uh, property information by MLS import. Uh, but the dates, I'm just going to choose some here. Uh, pick from the calendar. It pull, pulls the calendar. You can certainly type in there as well. Maybe even know that they submitted uh, a mortgage application. Again, just clicking on the little blue calendar icon there and we know that they you know, submitted that already. Uh, add the ones you have. Do you have to? Are they required? By no means are they required. Clicking on next, top right corner there. Clicking on next, we're just going to go through. Again, these are just the elements of our transaction file, the, um, the features and details of this new file that we have. I would like to is a very consistent phrase that you'll see throughout Transaction Desk, Transaction Desk Light View, uh, Mobile View. I would like to. Middle left side of the screen, I would like to. Is that phrase, and it's always in conjunction with this drop down triangle. That triangle, by clicking on it, will yield the drop down menu. It doesn't always have a lot of uh, menu options, but uh, always a few uh, to choose from. But I'll continue to emphasize and point those out as we go through. But yes, we do. I would like to add a new transaction contact. Click on the go arrow. I want to add my new buyer prospect, Ben Benson. So who? Buyer. Yes. If I did that a little quick, let me just show that menu again. Clicking on the triangle represents that menu of, of options. They're the ones you have to choose from. If you don't see the one you like, create your own. But remember, it's not the person. It's the contact type. Clicking on continue, I can now add the person, <laughs> and I'm going to type their name in. If I have been using uh, Transaction Desk to um, manage my online contacts, you can insert them from your Transaction Desk contacts into your transaction file. And that insert from, uh, that little uh, business card icon there, uh, but maybe it is, again, just that first conversation. Uh, you got their cell phone and maybe their email address. One nice feature, I'm going to point at it, not really going to speak to it too much. Um, certainly can answer questions about it if you're interested. Participant access. You can give your contact or contacts, whomever you add in, to your transaction file, access to your file details. If you And just the specific details you want them to have access to, uh, whether it's just that 
one signed document or a list of forms or some contact information that participant um, access you can grant your contacts online access to your transaction file details you decide the details I am going to click and add to my contacts because not only do I want to add Ben to this transaction file I also want to save him to my uh, transaction desk contacts so that when I click here in the bottom right save contact information by clicking there saves Ben to my transaction file adds Ben to my contact database are there any other buyers we add them in separately even if they're husbands and wives brothers and sisters parents and children business partners even if they're contacts that you would otherwise save as one you want to add them separately into your transaction files so that their information will autocomplete those printed name fields under those signature lines so where you have that buyer printed name or the seller printed name or the listing agent or the selling agent you add them in as contacts separately so that each person will autocomplete those printed name fields under those signature lines and we'll show that here in just a moment uh, when we look at forms editor but right now clicking on next because we actually want to add some forms to our transaction file here uh, I would like to there's that phrase add new forms clicking on the go arrow we're going to add forms to our transaction file so that we can prepare our packet deliver it to our client um, content that you can create quick start groups you can group together forms and contracts so that you can more quickly and efficiently add those forms to your transaction add content reduce time energy and effort increase consistency we're starting from scratch we've never created a quick start group or a transaction template we just need to get through setting up this uh, setting up this lease or, or whatever we're looking at here agency form so we're going to go through again nationally broadcast these folders might not look exactly the same the form names may look foreign to you but when you uh, go to your forms library you will see the forms for your state your local association uh, potentially your uh, office forms uh, we do offer those services so we're just going to grab a few for this example I'm going to select the one and then I'm going to go to the next one here clicking on the plus sign expands that folder we will choose that one pressing and holding the CTRL key press and hold the control key select the additional form um, not sure which forms let's we'll go down the purchase uh, Avenue here uh, and just press and hold the control to select the form add the forms that we want to complete and add to this transaction file this is just the first place that you can add them by no means the last and there's a number of locations where we'll point out you can add more forms so this is just the first run through add the selected forms this is where transaction templates really come into play because you know they're those same three or four forms every time the transaction template allows you to identify them and automatically include them uh, when starting new files otherwise we can certainly add them as we just did Sorry about my mouse there. It looked like it flew off handle, but uh, sometimes that go-to training sidebar gets in the way. Clicking on next, blue next button to are there documents? Do we have anything that we've received thus far? I know it's a brand new client, uh, but I am going to show you uh, a step here. Clicking on upload a document because maybe you got the prequal letter from the whomever from the bank or their banking statement I would like to there's that phrase upload a document move your documents online manage them 24 hours a day seven days a week online to the cloud <laughs> clicking on add because I'm going to access my locally stored documents maybe I received an email message and saved it to that desktop folder or I got some paper and I scanned it to file and saving that in my desktop folder I'm going to access that desktop folder I'm going to go to that desktop folder and find the appropriate folder and find the appropriate file. I think it's under Will. And there's my prequal letter. Select it. I can double click on it. And it's going to add it to this little upload manager. See, there's my document. What types of documents? Uh, PDF documents, Word documents. 
Excel spreadsheets, image files, JPEG, bitmap, TIFF, and GIF. So all these different photo and image files uh, are supported. You can upload them into your online files. Bottom right corner, add selected documents. Again, this is just the first time through. Whatever we have, we can add in. If we don't have it, uh, we can skip it. And I'm going to quickly speak to the next two steps and um, complete this complete this wizard. Clicking on return to document manager, we're in the transaction wizard of our new Ben Benson transaction file. We're just adding some detail that we have for this new uh, client or prospect. Or probably prospect now, we don't have any agencies signed yet, so there's still prospect and we're just getting this file together of uh, the details that we have. At any time, if we don't have any more information, bottom left corner, save and exit. If I'm done adding the content that I have, I'm go I can exit from the wizard, go to my transaction file. Just two speaking points here to work with others. You can create share groups for other agents within your office. So if you work with a business partner or if you work in a team environment where you, know, you work with each other's transaction files, if you um, work in that type of situation, you can first create the share. You create that share or that content within, and then you'll see them here to to share your files when you choose to. Again, just because you create the share and the content doesn't mean you have to share that particular file. You decide. But that sharing, not really part of you know, creating or writing up that uh, offer. Tasks, same thing. You know, not, not really part of writing up the offer, but these are additional transaction management features so they can be part of your transaction file. Um, the to-do list, you may do this already. You may have it, that new buyer checklist or that new seller checklist or that new leasing prospect, and you know the 12 things that you need to do um, for that new or, or you know, in-process client. So you can add those. We have some very specific activity plans that you can add in and task templates, but maybe best left for another session or, or let's get our form completed and delivered, and then we'll come back and talk about the tasks that need uh, to be added. So I'm going to save and exit from the wizard. We walked through, we added just some details to our new file. We just spoke with Ben, and we put together this transaction file so that we can now create the form packet and deliver it to Ben for his signatures and initials. So here's the forms we added, the document that we uploaded, scrolling down a little bit, the contacts. What we're looking at now the red bullet points here on the left-hand column, we refer to it as the dashboard. Dashboard here, red bullet points. We are in the top bullet point. This is the transaction overview page of our new Ben Benson transaction file. So this is kind of that high-level view of our new file here. All these bullet points, maybe some of them look familiar. Dates, property information, contacts, forms, documents, tasks, and sharing. Just going down those red bullet points. That's all we did. That's all the wizard is, uh, is steps through our uh, new transaction file to add this content to our, um, to our transaction file. All right. And now I do want to point out, here's that phrase again, right? I would like to. Consistent phrase. There's that drop-down triangle. Clicking on it, we have uh, this nice menu of uh, features. I had talked about um, importing data. We talked about importing data uh, to start our new file, but this is where we can import into our existing transaction file. So the overview, I would like to, a lot of good features in here that uh, are discussed in follow-up webinars, but import data, click on the go arrow. Clicking on that go arrow, we can import transact uh, property information into our existing file. So whenever you do identify that uh, property that they want to put an offer on or want to submit the lease on application, pull it in, property MLS, clicking on import data, clicking on that. Uh, again, like I said, probably th three out of four, or, you know, four out of five of you will have these MLS integrations. Uh, some of you may not, this nationally broadcast webinar, but um, you can, if you have it, if you benefit from it, that really is the big benefit to be able to pull in that data into your transaction file um, to reduce redundant data entry, you know, reduce time, energy, and effort when starting those new files.
We just pulled it in. Uh, now it's populated our property information. Um, been added to our new transaction file. Going down to the forms link, dashboard, eh, bottom left-hand side, I guess, Instanet Forms. We've added three forms to this transaction so far. By clicking on Instanet Forms, we can see those. See the first option is, I would like to add new forms. You, know, you can add additional forms to this transaction file. That option is there uh, and available. We're going to stick with the ones that we have. Uh, but I do want to point out this feature, auto-populate update forms. Uh, I just always like to get in the habit. I always show this. These are to verify or absolutely make sure that your transaction file details auto-populate your form fields. So clicking there on auto-populate update forms, because that's the way data travels from your transaction file to your forms. We build our transaction files with property information and contacts and dates we add that to our transaction file so that that information then populates our form fields. Red on screen confirmation, all forms successfully updated. Click on the form name to launch that form in Forms Editor. Because now we're going to go through and complete all of the required and optional fields. The required and optional fields to complete these forms, right, and deliver them outbound by print email, fax, digital signatures, ways to deliver your forms for signatures and initials. We do offer digital signature technology. AuthentiSign is our digital signature product. eSign compliant, Universal Electronic Transmission Act compliant, FHA approved, so that once you complete your forms, you can prepare them for digital signatures. That's just one way, though, you know, and different attendees of this way are going to go about just in different ways. Some of you will create the form packet and then print it to go meet with the client for their signatures and initials. Some of you will create the form packet and then email it to your client so that they'll print it and sign it and return it to you, and maybe using a fax back cover sheet or, or other technology to get those um, signed copies back into your online file. So that's where we're going. Uh, so the first step is completing these forms. I'm in the top-ish right-hand side of the screen. Uh, that column of forms that we see, there's a little red minus sign. Hover my mouse there, it says shrink window. We'll shrink that column against the right-hand side of the screen, just so we have better visibility into the form uh, that we are uh, working on. Scrolling down, we can see we benefited from the detail autofilling from our transaction file. All of the light blue fields are fillable. They're fillable fields uh, on these online forms. Instant forms, fillable fields. Uh, by clicking on a field there, uh, it does kind of highlight it in black. It uh, gives the name of the field and the maximum number of characters that can be typed. By clicking there, it activates that field, if you will, so that I can type or paste to add detail. And I say paste because anything you can copy to your computer's clipboard, so to speak, you can paste into your form fields. There are no restrictions from copying and pasting. I went going down to the big open text field now, line 20 there, and pasting. Nice feature of this open text field when I paste you can see I get the auto, the auto return there. It took me back to the left indent, and when I paste and so forth, there are no restrictions from copying and pasting. Complete your forms and contracts. All of the required and optional fields, you know, go through and down in the middle right there, complete those fields. If you like keyboard shortcuts, throw one at you here. The tab key uh, is a good um, to go between fillable fields. When I, every time I click the tab key, it takes me to that next fillable field. There's our act, of, you know, the dates fields and going through tab. There's our pre-filled uh, address. You see I just keep clicking tab and it keeps taking me across. One more keyboard shortcut won't bore you to death with them, but uh, that's, uh, bear with me here for a moment. Uh, I had a previous webinar that was recording 
just complete that process. So apologize for that, but fillable fields within our online form. The second uh, keyboard shortcut I was going to show you there is the space bar. By clicking on the space bar, you can add content or check boxes uh, to your add. You can add checks and X's to your uh, check boxes. So we're going to go through and we're going to complete all of the required and optional fields within these forms. Uh, one nice feature uh, as we can expand. I'm in the top right corner again, clicking on that plus sign to now expand that form column so I can go to the next form. Clicking on the agent profile form, I can leave the one form. I do like to show that prompt. If you do not save your changes, you certainly will be prompted to do so. <laughs> and on the next page here, we'll show you how you can uh, some more features of, of forms editor. But I always like to show that one. You will be prompted to save your changes. All of those blue fields are fillable. Uh, some of the features in the top left corner that you'll see, uh, again, this is going to be you know, to your preference, how do you want to start delivering these forms? Um, in the top left corner, up there by file, we can print each one to paper. We could take that step, we could print it to paper if we wanted to start generating paper to go meet with our client for ink signatures on paper pages, if you will. Uh, we can save them offline as PDF documents. They're completed. Uh, PDFs no longer fillable. They're offline Adobe Acrobat Reader uh, PDF documents. So we can take those steps. Again, top left corner, file. New is a new form. Access forms library to open that new form uh, to complete the, the required and optional fields. Send. Transaction desk account uh, users have opportunities to send this form via email. I could fax it. And you don't need to be within 1,000 miles of a fax uh, machine to send an outbound fax. It's internet faxing. You are instructing Transaction Desk to complete that action. You are being uh, notified via email when the action is complete. And it's real time. And you know, it's going to, you're going to get two emails basically once you hit uh, send. It's going to email you that it's been queued for faxing and then immediately follow up with the successful or, you know, that send message um, that was successfully sent. So ways to deliver your completed forms. Um, format, nice way here to update font, style, color, and size, and add or adjust the font features in the fillable fields. You can't change the font of the boilerplate uh, form, if you will, only within those fillable fields. Um, view, zoom in, zoom out. Again, if there's multiple pages, you'll have a go-to uh, opportunity there. Transaction is a nice uh, option here to add new forms. Uh, nice reason to add it from here is so that uh, it will be pre-filled uh, pre with all of your transaction file details. So adding a new form to our transaction file right here from Forms Editor, it'll open the new form in Forms Edit mode and pre-fill it with all of our transaction file information. So we've just seen a number of different places where we can add forms to our transaction file. Insert is another option to add contact Another option to add content to your uh, transaction desk account, clauses or provisions, uh, if you will, so that you can paste those clauses into your online forms. You generate the content, you can then paste that content into your forms and contracts right here through Forms Editor. Consistent and efficient, reducing redundant data entry, utilizing clauses to, to add that content to your forms. Last one there, help, online help. We do offer tutorial-based. This is screenshots and little Captivate videos and instructions on how to complete actions. Online help. Uh, live support is a tech chat, if you will. Uh, it will launch a live uh, chat session with our tech support representatives. I believe we're 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, Monday through Friday. Uh, for those support hours. So adjust for your time zones is accordingly. Um, I'll show at the end additional websites for uh, additional training and support content. Uh, but that's right here through Forms Editor. <laughs> Good opportunity there. So we've completed our forms. We've added the forms that we need uh, to this uh, transaction file. We want to now generate a form packet uh, or, or at least 
prepare them to be delivered. You know, so uh, from the column here on the right, you can see that I can email selected forms, fax selected forms, or print selected forms to PDF. I like the print to PDF option to generate a form packet, merge them together. Uh, the other two, well, the other one, email, will email them, but individually, uh, individual PDF documents or individual links within that email message. So uh, by choosing email selected, you would send three individual forms. Uh, faxing obviously would you know, merge them on the outbound fax, but uh, we're going to show the print. Print to selected, clicking on the go arrow. <laughs> it does make sense to select the forms that you want to print. That's always good. Um, so I, the top checkbox will select them all. You can certainly deselect the ones that you don't need to attach. But print the selected forms. Key to select the forms. Click on that go arrow. I just call it the go arrow because when you hover your mouse, the little bubble pops up and says go. So. Um, Meaningful sort order. So profile form, maybe we'll do the profile form first. Let's put the customer information form. That may be the first document that you have to uh, present to new clients. Customer information would be the first document using the green arrow uh, to move them into the appropriate uh, sort order. Information form first, profile form second, agreement to buy and sell third. So first page, second page, three through however many pages that you have in your contracts. I'm going to save a copy of this merge document to my uh, doc box, the document section of this transaction file. I am going to name this document. For some reason I just don't like the date right there. Um, it just gave it the name of my transaction file, so I'm going to call this uh, the lease app packet, something like that. However, you're going to identify this uh, form packet. So you can see and go, oh, okay, this is the one that it is. Give it your unique names or your file naming structure. Generate the PDF document. Bottom right corner, generate PDF. Again, within your namings, the best thing I could offer you is just to be consistent. Name them consistently. I typically use the client's name first, and then if there's an address or property associated, add that second. That's just me. Some of you probably do the exact opposite, where you put the property address first, and then any buyer or seller name. Uh, it's your property centric and not, you know, client centric. Or some of you are client centric. And while I was blathering on there, it merged our individual forms into one form packet. Clicking here uh, on the link, I can open this form packet. Again, we did have a copy saved to our transaction file, which we'll look at uh, in just a moment. But here's the PDF, the Adobe Acrobat. So maybe now you want to print it. You want to get it merged first. And now you want to print it to paper. Top left corner of this uh, Adobe Acrobat reader file, click that printer to print, or just next to it to save. Um, do you want to click on print? Because I'd like to show this uh, additional feature. And if I keep moving forward here, we'll probably have a good opportunity to show it. Um, if you wanted to print this to paper, I'm going to show all the options of printers that I have. You know, the Lexmark is my all-in-one. It's the printer, copy, scan, and fax. Uh, the Laser jet is, you know, black ink jet to be very efficient on those uh, printing and so forth. The magic colors, the color printer, blah, blah, blah. What you see here is the DocBox printer by Instanet Solutions, a, a transaction desk feature, a print driver that you can install so that you can email, fax, or upload directly from the print feature of any document uh, that you have. Uh, you install that print driver onto your computer or computers, and then when you go through that print sequence, you can select it to email, fax, or upload uh, directly from the, the print option within the document. It's a good feature we cover in our DocBox uh, webinar. We also have a little uh, five-minute overview of it on our YouTube site. So. I'm going to cancel out of there, but always like to point out that opportunity through the print feature, just additional transaction desk features uh, to manage that sale process, mobile access uh, to your documents and so forth. Minimizing that document, we did uh, save one here. Looking at our transaction file, we're in our uh, Ben Benson file. We just completed the forms. I'm going to click here on documents, just below it. Dashboard on the left, lower left corner. Clicking on Documents, 
we've completed our forms. Again, and different people on the call are delivering these different ways. Some of you, hopefully, are going to think about AuthentiSign. I'm in the dashboard still, AuthentiSign. You're going to think about, hey, I can deliver these by email to have my participant click to accept the digital and initial stamps that I put on there for them. Completely digital, take the paper cycle out, no more faxing, no more emailing, uh, create um, signings and deliver um, digital signatures through your sale process. But however you're getting them signed, digitally, you're printing them uh, to go meet with the clients and getting ink signature on paper, you are emailing them to your client, uh, you can see now we can, you know, there's that, the app packet, I would like to email the selected document. Uh, you know, I have these features within this drop down. I would like to, upside down triangle, you click there to yield these menus to see these um, options emailing being one of them, uploading documents back in to your transaction file. Once you get this signed, ratified contract, you can upload, fax, scan, so forth to get those signed, ratified back into your online account. The ones that matter, right? The ones that are binding, uh, the ones that you need to retain uh, for three, five, seven, ten years based on your state's uh, document requirement. Um, retention requirements. So opportunity there to get them back in to your online account. So we can certainly email it out. Let's just show that. I don't know if I've shown that feature yet. So click here, email select the document or documents as it will. Uh, click on the go arrow. The document's been chosen. I can send it as either an attachment, as a PDF attachment, or a link. So I can deliver this document as an online link. All the person has to do is click on the link and it will open that Adobe reader document. Uh, nice thing about that is you'll get a little uh, notification that they've clicked to open the, that link. They've clicked on it to open the document. You get a notification that that link's been uh, accessed. So nice feature there to get you some um, feedback loop. Who's your recipient? It's uh, Ben. Um, again, there's the little business icon there. We could select Ben from our contacts. Maybe we'll do that. Select from contacts, click on the little business card to pop up this uh, contacts. There's Ben clicking on his name, adds him and his email address to my outbound email. The message, now please review and call with questions, something like that. And send the email. It's going to get an email message, you're going to click the link, open the document, print it, sign it. Perhaps you can use a fax back cover sheet to fax it directly back to your online transaction file. Perhaps he's going to scan and upload it and then email it to you so that you get a PDF copy uh, attached to an email message. However you're receiving them is fine, but uh, certainly faxing services, the fax cover sheets essentially turn uh, paper fax machines uh, into scanners. Uh, they are cover sheets with barcode technologies that um, our receiving faxes read the barcode. That barcode contains your uh, uh, agent account information, uh, your transaction file information, so our receiving faxes convert those paper faxes to PDF and deliver those PDFs directly to your online transaction files. You are notified via email when those faxes are received. You get PDF copies of the received faxes. So very robust faxing services uh, covered um, specifically in the DocBox uh, webinar session. So once you've created the form packets and delivered them outbound, this is how you can re-upload them back in to your online account as well. What in the world does it keep doing that? My fingers are too fast for the mouse pad, I think. Um, but again, we create the files, we um, deliver them, we are re-uploading those signed versions back in. Um, about four or five more minutes, uh, that really is generating that transaction file. Uh, let me go back to the Home tab here for a moment. I do want to look at the Settings tab just, just for a minute, but we leave the transaction file. I just want you to feel confident, well, how do I get back there? <laughs> now that I've created it, I have no idea where to find it. Um, 
work with existing transaction. Well, I, my preference, I typically work here from the links at the top, the second row of links. Uh, I typically will click on transactions to see the transaction files that we've generated uh, within this account, uh, but also uh, to create new ones. There is a create new feature right from our, our kind of transaction page here. It shows the transactions that we've created. We can search our transaction files by this little filtering here at the top. Um, and you can also see that I would like to phrase, I would like to create new transactions. So by clicking on that transactions link, it gives me not only access to my existing files, but opportunity to create new files. Come back anytime, add, upload, revise, work with those online transactions. From transactions, I want to go just a little bit higher to the, to the top right corner there, settings. I want to click here on the settings tab, point out a few features. Um, this is where you can create the content for your transaction desk account. Uh, first thing you may, if you have no interest in any other content, <laughs> you might just want to brand your uh, account. You can add your personal photo and your company logos so that your fax cover sheets and your uh, outbound email messages are branded with your personal photo and company logos. You just upload them like any other documents, upload those photos and logos. Uh, but all the other features on this page, quick starts and transaction templates, activity plans, clauses and sharing are all covered in other webinar sessions. Uh, I do want to click here on my preferences in the top left hand corner, clicking on that action. Spoke about print driver and, and DocBox to go mobile access. This is where you can um, access those features. Green triangles, this dashboard on the left, bottom left hand corner, DocBox to go settings so you can go through the steps to uh, access through another view, through the mobile view, optimized for mobile browsing, uh, access to your online uh, documents and contacts and completed forms, all of that content that you have online, you can access through smartphones, iPhones, Androids, template or tablets, uh, netbooks and so forth. Uh, the print driver, uh, we saw a reference to that uh, through the print feature. You can print driver here, install that print driver onto your computer or computers to have uh, just another point of access to your online account to upload email or fax documents right through those uh, print option menus. But with that said, just want to be very mindful of your time, appreciative of your uh, energy and interest to attend this webinar session. Going to top center of the screen, going back to the home tab, uh, going to re-raise uh, this audio message. And thank you very much again for the opportunity to present. I do hope it was a benefit to you. Um, mentioned a YouTube account uh, where you can go and get that five or seven minute overview of the print driver or of the uh, doc box to go. You can see those features in action, but otherwise one to five minute how do I sessions online youtube.com forward slash instant webinars. Um, you can find uh, the calendar of live upcoming sessions as well as our full length of recorded 30 to 75 minute sessions transactiondesk.com forward slash training. So different uh, content lengths, transaction desk full length, 30 to 75, YouTube, uh, one to five minute how do I videos. Questions, webinars at instantnetsolutions.com. Please do submit questions, comments, general observations. Uh, let us know how we can best assist uh, with your training needs. Um, Final one here, tungle.me forward slash webinar, Greg, if you'd really rather skip their content uh, and schedule a session specifically for your office or your real estate team uh, to be more interactive, to uh, discuss implementation strategies, or just to uh, tailor the event to your time and the content you're most interested in discussing, tungle.me forward slash webinar, Greg, is our online calendar. They are free sessions. So again, just please let us know how we can best assist with your uh, training needs. I will remain available for you know, at least five minutes to answer questions uh, through the go to training sidebar, uh, that chat section. So please do type them in. And until we webinar again, 
I hope that you have a tremendous, tremendous day.